lecture, let us discuss about different types of ambiguities. While natural language processing tries to understand the language in which humans communicate, it faces several challenges. Ambiguity of words or sentences or phrases is one of the biggest challenge. First one is lexical ambiguity. So whenever a paragraph is given, that paragraph paragraphs are broken down into words or tokens. Then each token has got specific meaning. So there can be instances where a single word it can be interpreted in multiple ways. So from the paragraph we got we generated or the paragraph is broken down into multiple tokens or words. So every token or every word it may have multiple meanings. So the ambiguity that is caused by the word alone. So here we are just concerned about ambiguity in word rather than context. So such type of ambiguity is considered as lexical ambiguity. So if the ambiguity is present or if it is caused by the word alone instead of the context, then that is called lexical ambiguity. Example is, give me the bat. So here in the in this sentence, it is unclear whether bat refers to an animal or cricket bat. So here ambiguity is caused by the word bird bat. So we don't know whether this bat is an animal or cricket bat. Just by looking at the word, it does not provide enough information about the meaning. Hence, we need to know the context in which it is used. So if you see only this word, it won't provide us any meaning, right? This bat. So we need context in order to get the meaning of the sentence. So this lexical ambiguity, it is again divided into two types. One is polysemy and second one is homonymy. First polysemy. Polysemy means it refers to single word having multiple but related meanings. So what is polysemy? If a word is having multiple meanings and all those meanings, uh, all those uh, meanings should be related to each other. Example, bright. So what can be the related words or multiple words for this word bright? So it can be intelligent. Okay, intelligent, brilliant. So for this word bright, there are multiple meanings. So if you take this word bright, there are multiple uh, words or synonyms for this. So like uh, intelligent, bright. So even though there are multiple words for the single word, all these words, they represent same meaning. So that is the example for polysemy. Next one is homonymy. So it, ref it, is, it refers to single word again, but here it has multiple but unrelated meanings. So earlier polysemy means multiple but related meanings. Here multiple but unrelated meanings. Example, bear, left, pole. So bear means, here bear can be an animal or Tolerate. So it refers to, it have multiple meanings, but all those meanings are unrelated. So one is animal, second one is tolerate. tolerate. So this word left is having two unrelated meanings. One is direction and second one is left means departed from. So both, both the words are unrelated. Meanings are unrelated. Next we have pole. The first pole, it refers to citizen of Poland who could either be referred to as Polish or a pole. And the second meaning for this pole is it refers to bamboo pole or any other wooden pole. So both the words are having different meanings. So that is example for homonymy. Second one is syntactic ambiguity, which is also called structural ambiguity. It mainly refers to grammatical structure 
and rules that define how the words should be combined in order to form sentences and phrases. So, sentence it can be interpreted in more than one way, right? Due to its structure or syntax, such ambiguity is referred to as syntactic ambiguity. So, if I take this example, old men and women. So, this sentence, it may have two possible meanings. So, here, or, uh, all old men and young women. So, what are the two possible meanings for this sentence? Old men and women means old men and young women. As we are not using old here, it can be even young, young women also. Or else it can be old men and old women. So, there are two possible sentences for this sentence. Two possible meanings for this sentence. And second one is John saw the boy with telescope. So, here again two possibilities are John saw the boy through telescope. So, one is John saw the boy through the telescope. Second one is John saw the boy who was holding telescope. So, in the first case, John is holding telescope. Whereas, in the second case, John saw a boy who was holding telescope. So, here, first case, John is holding telescope. In second, second possibility, boy is holding telescope. So, these are two possible meanings for this sentence. And the third one is semantic ambiguity. So, semantic means it always refers to meaning. So, semantic of a word or phrase, it refers to the way it is typically understood or interpreted by the people. So, syntax, it always describes the rules by which words can be combined into sentences, whereas semantics describes what they exactly mean. Semantic ambiguity, it always refers or it occurs when sentences have more than one meaning. Say if I consider this example, Seema loves her mother and Shriya does too. So the interpretations can be, here there are two interpretations, like whether Shriya loves Seema's mother or Shri, Shriya likes her mother. So Seema loves her mother and Shriya does too. So here we don't know whether Shriya loves Seema's mother or whether she loves her mother. So, two interpretations. And second example, Aditya and Shraddha got married last month. So, we don't know whether these two people, they married to each other or whether they married separately. So, that is again semantic ambiguity. And the fourth one is anaphoric ambiguity. So, word which gets its meaning from preceding word. That is called as an anaphore. So, if I take this sentence, Susan, Susan plays the piano. She likes the, she likes music. So, here the word she, it refers to, so we can find out what the she refers to with the help of preceding sentence. So, here she is depending on the word in the previous uh, or preceding sentence that is Susan. So, the word she is considered as an anaphore and it refers back to preceding expression Susan. So, here uh, one more example for anaphoric ambiguity. So, the, the horse ran up the hill. It was very steep. It soon got tired. So, this sentence. So, there are two it's in this sentence, right? So, it is unclear to which each it refers to. So, we don't know uh, whether, uh, we don't know what this it refers to in second sentence as well as it refers to in the third sentence. So, this is nothing but anaphoric ambiguity. It leads to anaphoric ambiguity. So, the sentence it will be meaningful if first it refers to hill. It was very steep. So, this sentence will be meaningful if this first it refers to hill and second it refers to horse. 
So anaphora, it may not be in the immediately preceding or previous sentence. They may be they may present in the sentences before the previous one or they may present in the same sentence also. So if you take second example here, Darshan plays keyboard. He loves music. So in this case, he is a pronoun. So he, he refers to Darshan. So this is one more example for anaphoric ambiguity. And the last one is pragmatic ambiguity. So situational context, individuals, mental states, preceding dialogue and other elements, uh, they actually play a major role in understanding what the speaker is trying to say or else how the listeners perceive it. So here the pragmatic analysis or pragmatics, they mainly focus on the real-time usage of language like what the speaker wants to convey and how the listener infers it. See, we have some examples here. Say, the sentence is, do you know what time it is? So there might be multiple interpretations here. So what, here you need to find out what the speaker wants to convey. So direct meaning for the sentence is asking for correct time, current time. Whereas pragmatic meanings or other meanings for the sentence can be expressing anger to someone who missed the due time or something. So it depends on the speaker. So how the speaker uh, is conveying the meaning as well as how the listener understood it. And similarly, will you crack open the door? I am getting hot. So here crack can be either to break the door or open the door just a little. So this is a pragmatic meaning for this. Next, the chicken is ready to eat. So here direct meaning is direct meaning is chicken is ready to eat its breakfast. And what are the other possible meanings for this? The cooked chicken is ready to be served. So direct meaning is chicken is ready to eat the breakfast. So chicken is hungry. Whereas here, this refers to dish. The cooked chicken is ready to be served. So here this pragmatic ambiguity it completely focuses on what the speaker wants to convey as well as it depends on speaker as well as the listener. 